Hi everybody, Russell my hammers level. Hope you are safe and well. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell icon so you made up any time we put new content on. And today we have another episode of Hammers in Hot Water. So in terms of short-lived West Ham careers, we've obviously covered Mr. Boogers, uh, etc. But one man stands head and shoulders above the rest, staying with us for a total of 58 days. Step forward, Mr. Joey Beecham. So let's take you back. It was late June 1994, and we had announced the signing of Joey, a 23-year-old winger from Oxford United for £1.25 million. It was still the early days of the Premier League, and so such an investment um, for a, a club our size was a significant purchase. Um, he signed alongside others such as Don Hutchinson, uh, a £1.5 million signing from Liverpool, uh, John Moncur, who we'll hear from in a minute as well. So again, shows the comparison of the significant outlay of this transfer to West Ham. Um, he was intending to be our sort of headline signing of the summer so to speak um he was a strong you know wide man with a cultured left foot um had a sort of natural ability to glide past opponents and would score goals too um he was one of the first division's outstanding youngsters so you know a real coup for the club on paper very comparable to how we purchase our players now not necessarily you know we're going for the the guys in the championship and and, and and divisions outside of the premier league and the top five leagues for example to get some bargains it was a bit of a coup for us um despite his talent unfortunately oxford were relegated uh, in the 93 94 season to league two um, but many pundits were were labeling this uh, this a good a good signing for us and you know a future england star with one eye potentially on the euro 96 tournament nearly a couple of years down the line um oxford on the other hand weren't in such a good position they were in sort of they were in financial trouble um so the significance of the transfer fee played a massive part in the club's decision to let Beecham leave. Um, however, the play himself was was reluctant to leave. Um, he had little interest in playing football elsewhere. Um, in an interview Joey gave in 2010 uh, to the Oxford Mail, he revealed that he was given a very simple choice. Basically agree to the move or Oxford would probably go out of business. With little choice, he accepted the move. Um, for then a, a record fee for Oxford United um, despite however despite the acceptance of the move he didn't actually move to East London and instead stayed in Oxford using his signing on fee to actually buy a house in Oxford rather than um, stay move, move to East London and commute from Oxford to East London for training every day now um, you know, the then manager at the time, Harry Redknapp, recalled in his autobiography about Joey, saying that he was breaking down in tears on the way to training on the first day because he was homesick. Indeed, when we interviewed Mr. Moncur, he recalled um, how Joey confided him. In fact, we've got the clip here. This is what John said about uh, the signing of Joey. I signed on the same day as Joey Bochamp. <laughs> God, remember him, God. Because I remember talking to Harry and Billy Bonds and uh, they went to me, listen, we signed a fantastic player here today as well. You know, because obviously I had Chelsea sniffing. Yeah. So I went, oh yeah. He, they said, yeah, Joey Bochamp. He said he's uh, from Oxford. And to be fair, he, he was quite talented. Yeah, yeah. I said, lovely. You know, that's good. Then anyway, cut a long story short. Two days later, I'm sitting on the bus with him. We're going to uh, Eastbourne. And he says to me, I didn't realise it was two and a half hours from Oxford. I said, oh no. He went, I've got to leave. I said, you're having a fucking laugh, ain't you? <laughs> and this is a true story. I said, I said, I wouldn't go public with that one. I said, <laughs> they'll lynch you. But he did. And he lasted, I think he lasted about a week and a half or something yeah. like that. So, as John said, you know, very early on in his career at West Ham, the, the move wasn't going to work um, a few weeks later um, Jerry turned up late to a pre-season game uh, against Portsmouth and apparently was making little effort in pre-season training although Harry was slightly more sympathetic 
um, to to Beecham's plight. So their manager at the time, Billy Bonds, um, was less so, and actually labelled the transfer a complete disaster and actually called Beecham uh, a wimp. Um, and so you know, with Bonds gone by August '94. Uh, so within sort of a month or so of, of signing Joey, um, you know, it was believed that this whole incident was part as a contributing factor to him leaving, despite you know, other other mitigating circumstances. We'll say that it was widely believed that um, Bochum was going to play a key part of Bonds' plans going into the new season. And without the sort of this creative player the cupboard was bare um in terms of in terms of that sort of that side of the of the team so he was very much up the creek without a paddle um or as i've put in my notes without a ladder for some reason um so so joe, so joe was looking to escape um prior to the west ham transfer being completed um swindon town oh no they, they got no guess swindon town um arch rivals of oxford united had expressed an interest in Bochum and offered six hundred thousand pounds plus adrian whitbread who's friend of the channel in exchange so um this was enough to cut our losses basically with, with joey and um and after just 58 days um, with not playing a single competitive game for the club he left ironically jerry didn't want to go to swindon either um with the with the right with being sort of bitter rivals with oxford united um I, and you know for example um very similar to bonds and Redknapp in terms of one leaving shortly after um another taking over that happened exactly the same way in swindon john gorman who was the manager who signed him um he was gone sometime soon after signing joey to be replaced by steve mcmahon a very very different um uh, manager who was uh who didn't play joey at all really he wasn't one for for joey's style um and then by october 1995 14 months um into his swindon town career Joey was actually transfer listed and uh, a 75,000 pound bid from Oxford United. So from 1.25 million to 800,000 plus Adrian Whitbread to 75 grand by Oxford United was placed where he was accepted and was welcomed back to Oxford United and basically stayed there for the rest of his career. Um, in terms of Oxford, He'll go down as one of Oxford's greatest players and, and scored, you know, one of one of the greatest goals ever to have been seen at Oxford United. Uh, and so, yeah, he, he remained where he wanted to remain. He retired um, in 2002 at the age of 31. Uh, after retiring, um, the years weren't kind to him, to be fair. He played in the local Oxford non-league Pyramid scheme, pyramid scheme, pyramid league tables. Um, by two, by three years, 2008, he had major depression. Um, he went into suffered from alcoholism, and in August 2009, he was actually convicted for drink driving. However, from that point onwards, um, Joey's life improved dramatically and a lot better since that was sort of the that was the, the calling card that sort of drink driving conviction there's no denying joe's talent i mean you know john said it as well it was good it was a, it was a really you know uh, highly thought of sort of you know in in sort of putting in today's context or sort of championship player he was getting a lot of plaudits but he was a very fragile one um his anxiety to leave oxford perhaps might have been handled better in today's society with mental health, anxiety, player welfare, high on the agenda. Um, in an interview with Sky Sports, um, he highlighted that the support network just wasn't there. Um, he felt he was let down by management, um, so he was reluctant to try and reach out to them in the first few weeks, um, arguably under Bonds' tenure as, as, um, as manager. So he was reluctant to reach out and obviously you saw how john reacted to him as well um well, i find it, it was it was a different time then um you know where would he have been in today's game for example we've had we did a similar thing with javier margas who was a foreign-based player who suffered from uh, homesickness and again player welfare wasn't really there in the same way um i mean joey also revealed that in hindsight he should have probably moved to london 
um, and would have probably made a massive difference. Um, maybe the security blanket of Oxford, of Oxford just stayed with him. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Interesting story, I think, with Joe Beecham. Um, as I said, if, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell icon so you don't miss any content we've been put on. And for myself, take care, everyone. Stay safe, wash those hands, come on, you irons, and I'll see you again very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Much love.